Hey, how you doing? Justin here for a pretty different kind of video. This is way out of my comfort zone, to be honest. It feels a little bit weird not to be having the guitar in my hands. I had to at least put one next to me. Uh, basically, I'm feeling pretty good uh, mentally and physically, better than I've ever felt, actually. And I'm sure a lot of it is down to lifestyle changes that I made for 2022. And I feel like if I share them with you, maybe some of them might have a positive impact on your well-being as well. So I thought, yeah, uh, why not share? So my first little tip for you is the way that I start my day every day, and that is with a multivitamin. Now, I'm currently taking this one called AG1, or Athletic Greens. I'm sure you've heard of it. There's loads of health influencers flogging this stuff all the time. Uh, I first came across it in the Huberman Lab podcast. Andrew Huberman said he'd been taking it for years. I quite trust what he's got to say, so I thought I'd give it a go, and I definitely felt way better straight away. Now, that's only the last four months. I would definitely recommend you go and check out AG1. It is really expensive for what it is, but it works for me and I feel better. Uh, earlier in the year, I'd started taking a regular multivitamin and a pre and probiotic, and that was already a step up from not doing that. I'd, I guess lots of people take vitamins. I used to long ago, but I'd, I don't know why I just stopped doing it. But there was definitely a step up when I started just being making sure that every day I took a multivitamin and a pre and probiotic every morning. Uh, but the switch to the AG1 was noticeable. And I'm not getting paid for this. This isn't, I've got no coupon for you or anything like that. I just, ex my personal experience of the AG1 was really positive. So I'd encourage you to go and check it out. There's loads more information over on their website uh, about what, exactly what's in it and loads of people who know much more about the science of this stuff than me uh, explain what's going on. So you might wanna go and check that one out. If not, at least get back to a multivitamin I eat pretty healthy. I feel like I do healthy things and make healthy choices as far as my eating goes. But uh, for sure, maybe I'm not getting all of the nutrients that I need because I definitely feel better when I'm taking a multivitamin. Okay, my tip number two is not going to be for everyone, but I really, really feel like this made a big difference. Uh, I started the year doing some of the Wim Hof thing. I signed up for one of his courses. Uh, I started doing the cold showers and the, the, the big breathing thing that, the, you know, I, I was fully in. I didn't find the breathing to be something that I made a noticeable difference to me, but the cold showers did. Um, I'm really into doing both the cold showers and the, the plunge pools. I love the idea of doing an ice bath thing. I've done it a couple of times, but I don't have the space or time or energy uh, to go that far. But the cold showers, man, I, I do it every single day for 2022. Actually, that's not completely true. Almost every single day for 2022, I did a two minute cold shower at the end of my regular shower. It's awful. Today, particularly, it's like the, it's winter here in the UK right now, and it, the water is cold. <laughs> not as cold as it was in Helsinki. I was in Helsinki a few weeks ago, a month ago, and that was, that was cold. That left my skin red, and that kind of hurt. Now, if you've never tried it before, you don't want to start with two minutes. You want to start with just like 10 seconds, 15 seconds, something like that. I actually have a little shower clock now in the cubicle so I can time myself and I'm literally looking at it and I go crank, crank the full cold water and then I just stand there for two minutes, wait for it to, for the time to pass and then jump out. It's really strike I can't, I, I try to think how to describe it it's like horrible but like you just go oh wow it's like this this energy comes from nowhere and uh especially for hangovers man for hangovers it's the bomb like if i've got that nasty like dull headache thing going on the cold shower particularly on the back of the neck seems to sort that out really well but uh i feel like it's there's a whole bunch of things going on with it um, for sure, there are probably some chemical things going on. Again, there's a, a Huberman Lab podcast about cold therapy. You might want to go and check it out if you understand, understand a bit more about the science. I'm not going to go too deep into that. But I feel like there's a whole bunch of things going on to, with mental resilience as well and strength. And just you're starting your day by putting yourself through this thing. Like the, my mental toughness seems improved. And I'm sure a lot of it is down to do uh, to the cold shower thing. It's not pleasant, right? And, and I'm not ever expecting it to be, but I do feel it's of great value and uh, it's not something I'm planning on stopping now. It, it's, it's become part of my daily thing. It's definitely not going to be for everyone. Some people are just going to absolutely hate it and probably won't notice any benefit. But I hated it too when I started. It wasn't like, oh, this is nice. It was really horrible. Um, an alternative, if you're a gym goer already, uh, twice a week I do a, a 20 minute sauna and then a between two and five minute plunge pool. Uh, I feel like a cold shower at the moment is worse than the plunge pool. Maybe the plunge pool water's not as bad. 
uh, funny fact, I, I tried to film a video for, for I knew I was going to film, make this video. So I filmed myself doing the plunge pool and I set a timer for two minutes so that I knew that uh, uh, when to get out. But the, the, the timer never went off. It just stopped the video. So I was in there for, I don't know, four or five minutes going like, this is definitely longer than two minutes. What is going on here? Uh, and the video had just stopped. Anyway, a little bit of a random fact for you. But look, if you haven't tried it before, give cold showering a go for you know a couple of weeks and see if you don't feel any benefit. I, I'm 100% certain that it, it, it's one of the things that's added a, had a positive impact on my well-being this year. Tip number three, this is another one that might not be for everyone, but it's been a huge benefit for me personally, and that is Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Uh, I started in February, I train three, four, five times a week. I absolutely love it. I'm now a white belt with four stripes. Uh, there are just so many benefits to doing this. On the surface level, it's great functional fitness. It's an, I, I definitely feel stronger and healthier now than I did the previous year where I was going to the gym and doing like, you know, squats and bench press, tr traditional kind of weight training stuff. Uh, the fact that you're putting your body into all of these unusual positions, you've got the continuous pressures, it's just as a, on a functional fitness level, I feel like it's incredibly powerful. Also, the, the putting yourself in really uncomfortable positions and having to roll with people that are stronger and fitter than you that can absolutely dominate you. And it's like, oh God, how am I going to do this? Uh, it's, it's almost, it feels sometimes like human chess. It's a very, very deep and complex subject, like the way it works and the body mechanics. And, you know, it is a martial art and I'm sure it's a very effective one. I'm not the kind of guy that gets into fights, right? I just don't do that. I'm not planning on getting into any fights anytime soon. But most street fights will end up on the ground and on the ground, that's where BJJ excels. There's all of the mixed martial arts guys all train Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu because of that. So it is an effective tool, martial arts tool. But for me, that's not really the big deal of it. It's, there's so much more on a, on a kind of a mental and a spiritual level and the, the amount of times to things to learn. Um, it's really nice interacting with a whole new community of people that are really supportive and cool. Um, if you happen to live anywhere around me, I live in Surrey. Uh, if you happen to live in this neck of the woods, you definitely want to check out the club that I train at. It's uh, Jay Butler Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. It's an awesome club. Jay is a great coach. Uh, the community around it is really cool. Uh, you know, and if you come along, you might get to strangle me on a roll one day. Uh, yeah, if not that, do go and check out a club around you. It's not going to be for everyone, but I really feel like there's a load of benefit from checking it out. So I would encourage you to give it a go. A lot of my friends have had a go now at their local clubs and reported back that they're sticking with it as well. Uh, loads of musicians are, uh, seem to do it. Uh, I know when I post on socials anything to do with Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, I get a, a massive flood of direct messages from other practitioners. Uh, so yeah, I, I would really encourage you to give it a go. It might just change your life for a, in a real positive way. Okay, hack number four, this is another, probably an obvious one for anyone that follows me on social media, is meditation. Um, I just feel like it's such an important part of living. Now that I'm kind of practicing regularly, I just can't understand why I didn't do it sooner. Uh, there are tons of meditation apps around that you might like to check out. The one that I used to, that got me into it was uh, Sam Harris's Waking Up app. I know he's a divisive kind of a figure, so you, that one might not be for you, but Headspace is another real uh, popular one. Uh, these days, mostly I meditate just on my own. Uh, I've just found that it works for me better just to sit. I've got a little timer thing and I sit for between 10 and 20 minutes at least three times a week. Uh, when I started the year, I was meditating every day for half an hour, uh, and it was really valuable. I, I, I would like to do that, but I'm just struggling with my time balance at the moment to be able to put that much time into meditating. Uh, but definitely, just even three times a week, 15 minutes, it's just, the, the, it makes my head clearer, and it, uh, I have loads of great ideas on it while meditating. Um, one of the things that I do uh, is not as part of my three uh, emptying meditations where I'm just trying to, to not think about much at all or if thoughts come I just let them go but I also meditate with purpose as well so if I'm trying to do if I'm doing a new course uh, or I've got some decisions to make I meditate just and fully focus on a particular idea um, I sometimes do music meditation as well where I really try and zone in on a, on a particular thing about music or a particular track 
uh, you know, literally listening to music, but being very, very focused on, uh, you know, focusing my attention on a particular thing. So in that way, you're combining kind of music practice or guitar practice and, and meditation. There's, I was trying running meditation for a little while. I'm not sure that was the right place for me, but, you know, have a look around online. You're going to find loads of information on this stuff. I just want to give you a heads up on the topics, but you probably want to do a bit more research on it. I will make a page uh, linked to this video where I'll put down some links through to things that you might want to check out and resources that I found found helpful as well. You might want to have a look at that. But if you don't meditate already, I, it's just, it's such a profound experience. It, for me, it didn't start straight away. That It wasn't like I started meditating and it was like, oh, my life is different. But it was after maybe two or three weeks that I started to notice that I was generally calmer. I was more present. I feel like that's one of the key things is when if I'm hanging out with one of my friends and we're talking, I'm, I'm, I'm there. I'm not as distracted. I'm able to control my focus better when I'm practicing or when I'm interacting with other people or what, whatever. I, I feel like it's a yeah, I feel like it's a very powerful thing. And if you don't meditate already, I would suggest that you give it a go. So tip number five, this is a pretty new one on me. I've only been using it for about a month, but it's really good. It's called NSDR, No Sleep Deep Rest. Uh, the idea of it is based on yoga principles of breathing in ways that are really, really relaxing. And what I found, like particularly after lunch for me, I often had a bit of feeling a bit tired. I quite often took a nap of between 15 and 40 minutes uh, after lunch. I do get up early and go to bed latish, so it's a, a good uh, refreshing kind of point of the day. But I've started doing this 10 minute NSDR, which is kind of like you lie down and you breathe in a particular way. There are backing tracks around. There's one by Andrew Huberman again that you might like to check out. Uh, that one's a good one, but there are plenty of others around as well. Uh, I just find it amazing. In 10 minutes, I feel as rested as I did before having like a 40 minute nap, but I'm not sleeping. So I don't have that lag as well. Sometimes when I was having a nap, I'd wake up and it'd take me a little while to kind of get back into it. Whereas with the NSDR thing, I, I, I come out of it and I'm feeling like great, ready to go straight away. So that's a relatively new one on me. It's something I do at least five days a week, you know, in my normal weekday. I don't tend to do it on the weekends. Uh, but yeah, on my normal work days, after I've had lunch, I just sit down, lay down on a little day bed downstairs in the studio, I just lay down 10 minutes, incredibly refreshing thing. So do go and check that out. Like I said, I'll put a link over on the website for the Huberman one, but and some of the other ones actually that I've liked as well. So number six, this is a pretty funny one. I can't remember who turned me on to it and it feels a little bit weird including it. It's maybe not a life-changing thing, but it's a step in a positive direction. And that is toilet poetry. Um, all of us take our phones into the toilet. Most often we're going to end up on social media or looking at news or whatever. And I just feel like probably we're spending too long in there because of that as well. But it's social media, I don't think is a great thing. I, like I'm, I'm obviously involved with it as part of my kind of work thing. But every time I get involved with, you know, scrolling around, it, it feels like it's not right for me. So trying to remove some of the social media from my life is a good thing. And that was one place where I nearly always ended up looking at Instagram or Facebook or TikTok or whatever. So by leaving my phone out of the room, I put a few books of poetry in my room. doesn't matter whatever sort of poetry you like. And I just it just feels like a much more holistically nice thing to be doing rather than always being connected on the phone and scrolling and all of that doom, what do they call it, doom scrolling. It's just such a much more positive thing. Probably not, maybe it's not positive if you're reading uh, too much Charles Bukowski or something like that, but maybe so it likes a nice Dylan Thomas or, you know, T.S. Eliot or so, whatever, some nice thoughtful poetry just to take your head into a nice place, maybe present you with some ideas of things that you hadn't thought about before, to remind yourself of the beauty of life. I, I just feel poetry's in itself a really valuable uh, form of art and it, it's the perfect place for it just you know chuck a couple of books in the toilet and gives you uh, yeah a more positive uh, experience in that place okay number seven a little bit more serious uh, than the previous one definitely uh, most of you that follow me on social media would know that I'm a fairly committed stoic uh, that is I try to use stoic philosophy to inform the way that I live my life I feel like there's so much value in Stoicism, so many amazing things to learn from thoughts, you know, Marcus Aurelius a couple of thousand years ago, but the stuff that he's talking about is so relevant. And I feel like a, reading about it, researching it, trying to put some of those principles into your life is 
like the solution for a lot of the mental health problems that are so prevalent today, especially after coronavirus and the pandemic and the, you know, there's, there's a lot of people in a maybe not so great place mentally now. And uh, stoicism for me is just such an important part of the way that I view life generally. Uh, I think a great starting point is a book uh, by Donald, I always forget his last name, Donald Robinson called How to Think Like a Roman Emperor. It's about Marcus Aurelius. Uh, that's a fantastic kind of introduction to how Stoic principles, how you can use Stoic principles to affect a modern life in a positive way. Um, Marcus Aurelius' book Meditations is a you know a classic text as well that you might want to check out. There's some great stuff by Ryan Holiday as well. The Daily Stoic is an email that you can get every day that gives you some kind of positive Stoic affirmations and ways to think about life. Uh, for me, one of the most positive things, and I've actually just finished writing a blog post about this. It'll be over on the website shortly. Again, see the uh, links that'll be in this video to follow over to the website. I'll put a link through to this as well, is the evening stoic meditation. It's not really a meditation. It's just like a reflection on the day. So every night when I get into bed, before I go to sleep, I review my day. I think about what did I do that was really positive? What positive impact did I make on the world today? What negative impacts did I make in the world? I think about my interactions with people. Did I handle myself in a positive way with everyone that I met today, whether it was the person in the shop or whether it was my daughter or whatever? Like, just think about like what, what ways can I improve my relationships with people and the world and my life? What things did I do that, I, that are positive? What things did I do that I, should, I wanted to work on? By reviewing it every single day, it changes. You, you, I, I can see myself during a day about to do something and go, yeah, that's, I'm going to review that and I'm going to think that's, that was a stupid thing to do. So it, it somehow influences the days to come. Uh, it's just, yeah, I think it's a really, really positive experience. It can really change your headspace if you get into that. So the evening stoic meditation is, I think... A, a really great thing, but there's loads of, of, of things about Stoic philosophy that I think are really powerful, really important. Uh, so if you've not looked into it before, there's plenty of videos on YouTube if you just like Google Introduction to Stoicism. Um, yeah, for, for me, it was a real life changer. Again, it was something that I'd been dabbling in before this year, but this year I started to really get committed, to, particularly to the evening meditation thing. Um, I might be turning that into journaling. I'm thinking of next in the coming year uh, for 2023, moving that same idea, but making it into a journaling thing. I uh, feel like that could be even enhance further the positivity of I'm um, actually writing it down and taking notes and being able to review the week. I haven't decided on that one yet, but definitely, uh, yeah, I would strongly encourage you to go and do a little bit of reading about Stoic philosophy and see what takeaways uh, might benefit your life. So tip number eight, and this was one of those ones where I wasn't really sure whether I should try and include this or not. But I meet people all the time that don't ever think about where it is that they want to go in their life. And it's pretty important if you never, if you don't have a direction for yourself, the chances of you ending up somewhere cool are pretty slim. Mm -hmm. So I really think that a, a, a big part of, particularly for me, it's the end of the year review. I, I tend to do it at the end of every year and I try and give myself a goal for the following year. I write stuff down, not like New Year's resolution oh. stuff. I do do something like that, I guess, as well. But on a bigger picture, like wh where is it that I see myself next year? What would I like to have achieved? What can I do to move myself forward in a positive direction toward that thing? Very often people that don't have any sort of direction, they just wander around they find themselves after some time back in the same place where they started. They're like, I didn't get anywhere. I don't know where, you know, how come my life isn't going anywhere positive? I keep, keep on making the same mistakes and that kind of thing. I really feel like the, uh, this idea of having a purpose, of having like, this is where I would like my life to go. These are the things I'd like to achieve in my life. No matter how grandiose or ridiculous they might seem from where you are right now, it, it, at least if you, if you never reach the summit of that thing, that, you, that, that goal to which you aspired, at least if you're some of the way there, you're going to be feeling more positive and you're going to be closer. It's going to be more achievable the closer you get to it. So I really would encourage you, if you've not done it before, just to spend a bit of time thinking, just thinking about where you're at, what things you'd like to achieve out of life. And sometimes it can be difficult. I must admit that for lots of people that, particularly if you're not career driven or whatever, to, to find a purpose is, can be difficult. 
I often feel that sometimes knowing where you want to go is the hardest part. Like once you know, I do it, you know, it's less significant, but I have it with like guitar lessons and stuff. If I don't know the plan, it's very hard for me to do it, to make videos if I don't know exactly what the point of it is, where, where the stepping, if it's a stepping stone to helping people be able to do this or that. So I, have, I spend a lot more time planning than I do doing. Planning my courses takes longer than filming them, for sure. And I feel like in life it's much the same way, that once you decide what it is that you want to do, you've got a lot, the actual doing of it part is relatively simple. If you decide that, hey, I really want to, I want to be my own boss, I want to have a, a business, okay, well, what do I need to do? Okay, then that's another brainstorm. Ziggy, I'm trying to film a video here, darling, I know you like cuddles, but come on. Um, so yeah, having, having this, you know, having an idea, getting a focus of, of a thing that you want to do or a, a, whatever your life goal wants to be is going to take some thought, okay? If you've already got it, then maybe spending some time thinking about how you're going to achieve it would be the most valuable thing. But just time reflecting, whether you want to call it meditation or you just want to call it thinking, you know, uh, going fishing for the day or going to sit by the beach or whatever, just take a day out and just really think about where it is that you want to go and the steps that you can take to make your life move in that direction. I'm sure that's going to be a huge benefit for nearly everyone, including myself. So my tip number nine is about fitness and taking care of yourself. Obviously, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is pretty hard work and I feel like that's great for my functional fitness, but I still do at least one Pilates class every week and I try and do a short yoga flow, uh, 10, 15 minutes every day just to kind of loosen up and stretch, stretch in a little bit. And this little beautiful thing here, come here, Six, come on, come here, is also an important part of my fitness routine because I have to walk her every day. And I feel like that's a big deal. So let's talk about the dog walking first of all. If you're one of those people who finds it hard to get yourself motivated to go and do fitness, having a dog is fantastic. Obviously, I'm not recommending you get a dog if you work nine to five and you're going to leave your dog locked up all day or whatever. And uh, But the great thing about having a dog is that it makes me go outside. Even like the weather's pretty rubbish today. It looks like it's going to get worse. But I guarantee you I'm going to be out there walking the dog in my raincoat in a little bit. She needs an hour walk every day. So... I tend to do it as a kind of a power walk. I don't, I don't just dawdle along. But even that would be good exercise. It gets you out in the fresh air, you see there's some countryside or go to a local park. I, I really feel like that having this dog has really made sure that I get myself out very often. Obviously, I share walking with my partner and sometimes we go out together, but very often we alternate it. So I'm tending to walk her on the days that I'm not doing like super hardcore uh, jujitsu training. But um, yeah, I... I I'm not saying that you should, like I said, I, I don't think you should get a dog just for yourself because it's obviously, it's a bigger thing than that, uh, you know, and you have to care for them and all of that. But if you're in a position to get a, a dog or you've been thinking about it, it's a really great fitness tip. To move back onto the other two things, yoga and Pilates, both of those things are amazing. Pilates definitely has a reputation as a thing that's for old women. And I find it an absolutely amazing uh, fitness exercise uh, I don't mean that in a derogatory sense either before somebody jumps on me for, for slagging off at being for old women. I'm not a, a young man myself, but I feel like when I mention Pilates to other, other particularly men, they're like, really, you do Pilates? Like, and sometimes at the gym, it will be kind of mostly women in the classes. Um, but there's, it's mostly about core fitness and it's just... I, I always come out, you know, really having felt like I've done a pretty serious workout. So it's definitely something that I would encourage you to try out. It's got similar benefits to yoga, but there's less of the kind of spiritual part of uh, yoga. I should mention that Pilates was actually designed by a guy as well, Joseph Pilates. So it's not, uh, it's definitely not just a thing for women. Um, I do like yoga as well, and I find yoga is a good flow for me in the morning just to kind of limber up doing a, you know, a vinyasa flow uh, thing. It's just good. It seems to kind of wake up my body a little bit. So if, if you're not inclined to be doing something like ju uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, then I would check out maybe a Pilates or a yoga class around you. Maybe doing it online if you don't want to have to go to a class. You can definitely learn that sort of stuff using videos. There's hundreds of people on, uh, of yoga and Pilates experts on, on YouTube uh, doing different flows at different lengths. So I would definitely check that out. I just really feel like a lot of people don't care about their health. And, and I didn't for a long time. Jesus, I was well rock and roll for a good 20 years. Uh, where I just didn't do any of that. You know, my uh, 
My girlfriend encouraged me to get into running, so that was kind of my gateway thing. I got into running and started doing like 10K runs and then a marathon, and then that led me to looking at going to the gym again and trying to get healthy. Uh, you know, I was really unhealthy actually before I got into that. So you can change yourself. I, I, you know, when I started running, I, I used to run, I lived near, in Richmond, I used to run to Richmond Park and I was like, yeah, that's it. I'm, I'm going, turning back and she'd go off for a 10K run. It, it's always difficult if you're not fit to get fit. That, that initial stage is really hard work, but I promise you the benefits are really, really huge. So if, if, you, if you're one of those people who doesn't do a lot of fitness things, then I, yeah, please do. This year, this coming year, turn the table, just get into it. Don't, you know, fight your way through, push through and get, see if you can get yourself doing some exercise every single day. So the last thing I want to mention, should be an obvious one, and that is play music. Music is such an amazing therapy in these days where we're all looking at screens and doing that stuff all the time. And there's social medias and pressures and anxiety and all of these things go, ah, playing guitar is like a meditation. So even if you don't want to meditate, meditate and sit cross-legged on the floor, you don't have to do that. I'm just making a silly joke. But guitar is just a beautiful thing to be doing or music in general. It's a great escape. It helps with all sorts of aspects of life. There's loads of science showing that it improves cognitive function. It's great for learning about time management. It's great for learning about dedication and making sure that you can sit down and do this thing. Uh, learning about what inspires you to make music, maintaining motivation. There's loads of benefits that I feel spill out into the rest of life as well. So obviously I'm gonna be biased, but Make sure that you make time for music this in the coming year. Uh, even if you have to schedule it, I know it's, you know, I think having a practice routine and working on things and having a goal, all of that stuff is really important. But for some people, it's just about getting your bum on the seat and enjoy having some free time away from family and work where it's you time. You're just doing a thing that you want to do because you love doing it. So, you know, I can't recommend it highly enough. Music is an incredibly powerful thing. I really hope that I can help you with that part of your journey. Uh, I'm not going to help you with much of the other stuff that we talked about today, but guitar, almost certainly I can. So do log into the, remember that we got the practice assistant there over on the website. We're working on some fantastic new tools in the coming year that it's going to help you with your motivation and keep you new on track as well. So keep an eye on the website for those things. Sign up for the newsletter if you haven't already. Uh, you know, music is one of the most powerful things that we don't fully understand uh, how it affects us the way it does, but it's such a great therapy. It, it's been there for all of the miserable times in my life and helped me through, or maybe it'll help you through if you're having a bad time or just improve your life if you're feeling pretty content already. Um, this has been a way longer video than I was intending. If you've made it this far, like thank you for being interested. I really hope that this might have some sort of positive impact on your life in some little way. That would be an amazing present for me if it did uh, made a difference for you. So uh, yeah, wishing you an incredible year ahead, no matter what time of year it is or when you watch this video. And I'll see you for plenty more guitar lessons very soon. You take care, bye-bye.